Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel and to my bathroom. Tonight, I just want to show you my nighttime routine with tretinoin. Uh, I just want to share with you some of the products that I've been currently using. And I definitely plan for this to be a nice casual and chatty video. I recently uh, switched up my tretinoin from 0.035% of tretinoin up to 0.05% of tretinoin. And I haven't done a routine um, since then. It's been a couple of months. Things are going really well. So I want to share that with you and I also want to talk about well aging um, because this is something that is always on my mind when it comes to skincare and it is a philosophy that is not just about products and skin but it is like a life philosophy so I want to share with you what that means to me and um, touch a little bit more on on the topic right of aging so if you're so ready to you know, kick off this nighttime routine, see some products that I'm using with tretinoin and um, relax and, and, you know, chat and have a conversation. Give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump in. So I'm obviously wearing makeup. I'm gonna be doing a double cleanse tonight to make sure that all my makeup and sunscreen is off of my face. And we're starting with a nice clean canvas. I'm still using the Kose Softy Mo Speedy Cleansing Oil. And then I'm gonna follow it up with the La Roche Posay AP Plus Lipicar Wash. I love this at the end of a long day. It's been a long day. I've been filming a lot of different videos and I just look forward to, you know, washing the day off and, and then like starting, you know, like my free time, my night time, my relaxation time. So I love this cleanser because it's like really gentle and moisturizing, but it does also foam up a little bit too, which is good because especially, especially in the summer when I'm sweating so much and I also get a little bit more oily in the summer, but um, also wearing a full face of makeup, I just really like to make sure that I am removing every little last bit of it. Ah, feels so good. I'm going to use um, a little layer of the La Roche Posay Thermal uh, Spring Water just because it feels so good. I've been liking doing just like a quick little layer of this. It adds some um, some nice nutrients into the skin. Um, it just it feels so good and refreshing in the summertime too. Um, and then I'm gonna follow up with the Kane Kombucha Balancing Ampule Toner. So let's talk about well aging because this is something that has been on my mind. Like it's always on my mind. It's a big part of my skincare journey. But this is also something that I've wanted to talk about because in my July favorites video, at the end of the uh, video, I was talking about, you know, your skin, the clarity, the clearness, the whateverness, right, of your skin is not tied to your self-worth and it shouldn't be tied to your self-confidence either. I think we put so much pressure on ourselves to have perfect skin and we tie our confidence and our self-worth and our value into that. And we focus a little bit in on the mirror too much and it just, it just causes a lot of pain, right? And so that is something I've learned on my journey is to try to release, it's, it's easier said than done, but try to release the ideas of, you know, my worthiness and my value is wrapped up in how my appearance is, how I present myself to the world, how my skin looks. And um, that's true of well aging as well. And so I wanted to touch on that because this is something that I've been thinking about a lot as I am getting older. I'm in my mid thirties now and well aging, like I said, is a big part of my skincare journey. And I specifically uh, want to use that phrase well aging versus anti-aging. You know, the last couple of years I've been feeling like I don't even know what like the cool music is anymore. I don't know what like the cool TV shows. I don't know half of the celebrities anymore. That definitely makes me feel um, like I'm getting older. Um, and then of course, like as you like progress to an age, you start to like <laughs> your mortality starts to set in, right? And I think about all the things I did when I was a really young kid, but like a teen and even in my 20s. And it's like, that was so like, that was so senseless. That was so silly. I can't believe that I did these reckless things and I just thought like nothing would ever catch up with me, right? And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm worried about my joints. Um, you know, all jokes aside though, if you think like that, then of course you're going to feel like you're more progressed in life or maybe a little bit older. But when I think about like, I'm constantly trying to be the next best version of myself. I'm constantly trying to learn new things. I'm constantly trying to work on my health and my mental health, my mindset. And I just feel like I'm just so at the beginning, you know what I mean? Um, a couple steps in maybe, but like I still feel like I have so far to go and that actually energizes me 
that makes me feel like there's so much more life to explore and to live. And that is my definition of well aging. Um, it is so much more than just a numerical age. It is so much more than how my skin looks. And so that definition may not resonate with you, but it's really about, you know, going on that, that self-discovery, you know, journey. I'm trying not to use the word journey too much, but it's, it's such a meaningful term to me going on that, that journey to really decide what it means for you and how you want that well aging journey to play out in your life. So now I'm going to go in for two pumps of the Cosrx Snail Essence, and I have been loving this this summer. I've used this product um, for many years, a really long time ago, and it fell out of my routine, and I've recently been using it again. I think my last routine I did, you saw it because it's been such a staple for me. And it is just, it's hydrating, it's plumping. It's also balancing though. There's like a kiss of moisture to this that feels so nice on the drier areas of my face. And it is actually been really good for helping to keep breakouts away. So this is the Skin 1004 Pro Bio Sika Intensive Ampule, quite a name. Um, and I've been liking this so much because it is all about your skin barrier and your microbiome. They're using fermented centella, there's ceramides and phytosphingosine in here, niacinamide, all kinds of good stuff um, for the health of your skin. And I like that it is kind of like a creamy gel type of texture. So it's got moisture to it, but it's not like oily and rich. And so it's just perfect because I'm building up moisture, but I'm building it up light on my skin because it is still stinking hot um, here. And um, I, I can't, the air conditioning is like so harsh. I try to like keep it a little bit higher and so um, it can be just a little bit warm. I don't want to overwhelm my skin. I also don't want to freeze um, under the air conditioning either. So this is like just that perfect kind of like building up moisture, but not building up too much thickness on the skin. And right away, I'm just going to go in for eye cream too, because that just sunk into my skin. I've been talking too much. This is the um, caffeine eye cream from the Inky List. And this uh, follows a theme. The texture here is that like creamy gel type texture. Let me show you, because it's really nice. Um, if you don't like super thick, like eye creams, look at that. It's not super creamy. It's got more of a gel type of texture and it just feels really plumping, which I love. I love to plump out my under eye area with eye creams. So, so good, quickly absorbed and really just fresh feeling, which I really appreciate. So anyways, you know, well aging, a big part of that for me has been accepting that things are outside of my control with breakouts, with hyperpigmentation, but also with like fine lines, right? Um, definitely I see changes on my skin and you know, that can be something that we can obsess over, you know? Um, that's what I was talking about in my July favorites video about like, just really like, zeroing in on what we perceive as our imperfections or the things that we want to fix and we get so hyper focused on them and we really like we talk so harshly in our head about it this is so true of the aging journey i think for everybody especially if you're into taking care of your skin i think it's particularly ingrained in in females i think because of how our society views women and and we have a perceived value for women that when you're younger or when you look younger, you were perceived as more worthy or valuable than older women. I think things are starting to change, um, but I think it's just absolute nonsense standard that we've accepted for way too long. Um, and I see this a lot in like celebrity culture too, the way that the press or whatnot talks about celebrities, you know, um, and, and watching like a hawk if they've had work done or if they're looking a little older or you see, um, there are also a lot less opportunities for older, um, actresses as well, because we just have this stigma against aging in our society. And so those things, those are all ingrained messages, whether we accept them right? Intellectually, um, and, and like even at a heart level, we may not accept those things. We may be, Hey, that's BS, right? But it's ingrained in us nevertheless, um, to a certain extent. I mean, these are messages that we have been receiving since we were babies, right? <laughs> um, we've been exposed to this and it doesn't matter if you're a female, if you're a male or how you identify these messages, we take them on and we get the, the idea in our head that like it is not good to age in our society. 
you will be less worthy, you will be less desirable, you will be less successful, you will be less um, anything, you know, there, there's less opportunities, right? I mean, ageism is a, is a real thing. And so all of this gets ingrained in us. And then we look in the mirror and we see our face changing because we're getting older. And that can make us feel a certain type of way, right? Um, and we can fixate on little fine lines that are appearing, or maybe it feels like, you know, you're losing some elasticity and firmness in the skin. And, you know, there's definitely things within our control that we can do with skincare. You know, I'm using tretinoin, which is a collagen stimulating ingredient that really helps to address a lot of those concerns with elasticity, firmness, fine lines, wrinkles. But I also, you know, tretinoin is also amazing for photo damage, for evening out the skin. It's also great for acne. Um, there are things we can do with skincare. There's, of course, there's things that we can do with Botox, um, fillers. Um, there's all kinds of like little mini kind of things that you could pursue if you wanted to. Um, I'm not against those things. If those things make you feel good, I think you should do them. Um, but I also think that we should acknowledge that these are tools that we can use to maybe enhance our appearance, but these aren't tools that are going to solve the conversations happening in our head when we look in the mirror right? It's not going to soften the relationship that we have with ourselves and that we have with aging. It's not the be all end all, right? Um, we will probably still, even if you do fillers or Botox or any of that, like those enhancement types of procedures, um, or treatments, it is very likely that you still be unhappy <laughs> with your appearance. Um, if you don't first do the work, right? to really start to challenge the rhetoric in your head and really start to challenge, like I said, those ingrained messages. Because from an intellectual level, you may not accept it, but at a certain point, you do have to acknowledge that like you still take them on though. I know I have. I am actively working to undo that, those messages that I've received. I don't, I don't agree with them, but they're still in me and they still pop up in that inner dialogue when I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm seeing changes. Um, so those are tools that we can use. I'm not against them. I've never done them, but I'm not against them. And maybe I'll do them in the future. But what I'm saying is it's not going to fix like all the ingrained grossness <laughs> that we've taken on just because we're human beings and we, we absorb what's in our environment. Right. And so we have to fix the relationship with ourselves. We have to define what aging or well aging means to us. And, um, we have to actively challenge you know, those thoughts, because sometimes what comes up in our head, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we have wrinkles here and here. I look so old. I'm, nobody's going to want me. I'm never going to get a promotion. I, my self-confidence, like I can't bear to look in the mirror. Is that you speaking? Or are those the messages that we've taken on from society? You know, um, really actively challenge that and figure, figure out if that is actually something that that is you. Is, is that something that you don't like? Um, or is that something that society is telling you you should not like? So it's Stradia Liquid Gold time. You know, I love this stuff. I use it every single routine. Um, and I'm going to use the ordinary chia seed oil alongside of that as well. So I just mix three drops oops, of the oil, make sure it doesn't drip down on my feet, um, into a pump of Stradia Liquid Gold and then I apply it that way. Um, it just, my skin just accepts these layers when they're mixed together a lot better than if I were to do a layer of like the emollient cream and then an oil on top, it would just feel too thick for my skin. This way, when I mix it, I get all of that nourishing goodness and comfort, um, but without a lot of like thickness or greasiness on my skin. You know, I always say like layering skincare is an art and it's just all about like figuring out what works for you and this is what works for me. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of the CeraVe moisturizing cream. I'm gonna put some, um, on my eyes, around my nose, what do I call it? My nose crack, and then a little bit on my chin. Um, this is just, I like to put a little moisturizer here before I apply my tretinoin, um, just to make sure that those areas are moisturized. Like my eyes, I don't run it over my eyes, so I wanna make sure I get moisturizer there. And then I do add just like a little buffer um, of moisture here around those sensitive areas. The, the area around my nose tends to get really dry. And then my chin, for whatever reason, is like the driest area on my face. So I just like to give another extra layer of moisture before I apply my tretinoin cream. 
Um, let's talk about Barbie really quickly because like so many people are criticizing Margot Robbie's appearance. She's like one of the most beautiful women in the whole entire world. And they're saying that she looks old because she has visible um, expression lines on her face. Let me tell you, first and foremost, Margot Robbie is an actor. Um, her face and her expressions are her livelihood. Her ability to emote with her face and to convey emotion um, and to tell a story with her face is important. If she, if she were to shoot her entire face up full of filler and Botox, she would not be able to do her job. Okay, so first and foremost, I hate when people criticize um, mostly female actors, right? That they um, have, that, they, that they're aging, that they have fine lines and wrinkles because it's like, yeah, they emote. How else are we supposed to express ourselves if we can't raise our eyebrows and smile, right? So that bothers me first and foremost because it's like it's a tool of the trade. But also like she's one of the most beautiful people in the world and we're really going to zero in on these fine lines and we're going to label this as unacceptable, unattractive, and she's unworthy of this role. Are you kidding me? She's one of the most talented, beautiful. She's so perfect for this role. I haven't seen it, but I just know, you know what I mean? I've seen the trailers, I've seen her. She is it for this role, you know what I mean? She earned that role, but we wanna criticize her because, oh my gosh, she looks 30 and she's 30. Like she's in her 30s and like, ugh, why doesn't she still look like she's 20? You know, it's like, it's, these are the messages that we take on, even if we don't agree, this is what we're hearing. This is what we're being told is, is right. And it's just so frustrating to me because you could take that message on and you could look at Margot Robbie and you could be like, yeah, she looks old. She has fine lines. Oh, shame on her. Or we could try to, you know, really confront that that rhetoric in our mind and, and like I was saying before like is are these our thoughts or this is what society is putting on us put that aside when I look at Margot Robbie when I look at her face when I look at her in the Barbie trailer and all the pictures and everything I'm like she's so charming not only is she like drop dead gorgeous but actually like I was saying the expression lines had so much character. They allow her to do her job. They allow her to emote and it makes her unique. And I'm actually so charmed by it. I actually really like it, you know, um, which is not normally what somebody who's into skincare or somebody who's into beauty would say, hey, fine lines are okay. Expression lines are okay. In fact, they're charming and we should embrace them. But that's actually like how I feel. And so I'm not really that afraid of getting lines. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I have some, and like, I think they're charming, you know? I think you need to define what well aging means for you. I think we need to challenge what society, that message that society is, is pressing on us about how we should be aging, how we should be fighting aging, how we should be anti-aging. And we really need to be embracing what our personal values are around well aging. And it's gonna be different. Maybe you are not comfortable with fine lines, that's okay but define that for yourself. So you know when you look in the mirror and when you're looking at your skin, you know that the thoughts and you know sometimes the judgments, right, that we place upon ourselves, you know that they're yours and not somebody else's. So I'm gonna be using um, my tretinoin tonight. This is from Agency. Um, so it's online dermatology. And what's cool about this service is they don't just do tretinoin, they do other compound actives too. So I have azelaic acid, niacinamide, as well as tranexamic acid in here, which really is everything I need. It's all the actives that um, are beneficial for my skin goals in one little tube, which I love. I am actually going to be trying a different service soon because I really, you know, I just really wanna explore what's out there, especially um, because I do like to do reviews and share with you what I think is a good value, what I think is worth it. So I do wanna branch out a little bit, but like Agency is so close to my heart. I really, really love their product. Um, and yeah, so anyways, back to the subject, right? Um, I just did a pea size amount and then I just did little drops, drops, dots, around my face to help um, it spread more evenly because it is a small amount, but it's so potent um, that you really do wanna be uh, careful and precise with the amount that you're putting on. And so 
I can use a smaller amount that way and then I can get it to spread a little bit better when I dot it across my face. I'm gonna let that sink in and then I'm just gonna do another layer of moisturizer and I'll be done. But here's some final thoughts and I know my conversation has been kind of all over the place. These are just thoughts that I have around skincare and aging and like who else am I gonna share it with except for you, like my skincare enthusiasts, like soulmates, right? Um, I just feel like we're at a, a point in time right now in our society where yes, individually, there's so much more freedom. Um, so many more people are really kind of stepping out of the shadow of anti-aging and whether, you know, they're using the term well aging or not, I think that people are really starting to embrace aging in a positive way. Um, I, my mom is, she's in her mid fifties and she, um, premature gray hair runs in our family. I have it too. Um, like my grandpa was started to go gray at 18 years old. So like, this is not an aging thing. This is a genetics thing. Um, but my mom has been totally like hundred percent gray for probably since her thirties. I'm not there yet, but, um, anyways, she's hundred percent gray. She's been dying her hair for a long time, decades, obviously. And she's finally decided to just embrace the gray. She's like, I'm sick of dyeing my hair. I'm sick of all the, of the effort and the upkeep and the whatever and the money. It's just not worth it. And she's going completely gray. And I am like so proud of her. And I'm like in awe, a little bit envy, right, of her. And I think it's what I'm going to follow, you know, when the time comes for me. I'm, like I said, I don't have that much gray hair, so I can't do that right now. But um, I love that. You know what I mean? Like I, I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, love that for her. And she's still really young, but she's gonna go completely gray and I think it's gonna be beautiful. That's what I'm talking about, stepping outside and redefining what well aging means and not following what other people and the pressure that they put on us of what aging should look like. We're redefining what that means. And so whether you are in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, 70s, 80s, I mean, you know, God willing, your 90s, right? It doesn't have to look a certain way. It's about your journey. It's about what you want. It's about, about what you're embracing and about your values. And so don't let society or other people influence you on how you feel about yourself, about when you look in the mirror, how you feel, how you perceive your confidence and your worthiness. It's none of that. It's not, it's not other people. It's not society. It's not any of these other things. Push them out of your mind. Focus on yourself. How do you want your journey to look? So I'm curious about your thoughts on well aging and this entire conversation. Um, this is just something, like I said, uh, that's been on my mind. I wanted to share it with you and I welcome you to share what's on your mind now as well in the comments below. And if you love this video, maybe it was the first one you've ever seen from me, but it clicked with you, I would really be so honored if you would hit subscribe and turn on notifications. I do release a lot of new skincare content throughout the week, long form videos and shorts as well. And I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for creating a positive community. That's what I've always wanted um, from this YouTube channel is to create a really positive skincare space for different everybody. You know what I mean? Everybody from different walks of life. I think that we are achieving that. And so much of that is because of you and the, the beautiful energy that you bring. So I just wanna honor you and thank you um, for being here. Um, I cannot do this without you. I, I am so grateful to you. I hope that you are healthy, happy, and safe. I love you so much and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.